Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kim Ray, and you're watching Kim Ray Music TV and I'm back with another Greenleaf review. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below and like this video and share this video with all your friends and make sure you comment what you thought about this week's episode down below. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this review. Okay. So the episode opens up with Bishop and Lady May. Um, Bishop is on the phone. He's trying to figure out how Rochelle is back and they ain't know. How Rochelle is doing all this stuff and they don't know about it. Why can't nobody get Rochelle and, and arrest her for the things that she, um, what she did to Bishop, right? And he's not able to get any answers. Now he is saying this is a top priority. So all while this is going on, Lady May is trying to get him to leave because he is about to miss his physical appointment. And Bishop's like, listen, my number one priority right now is finding out about Rochelle and getting her locked up, okay? I am not concerned about my health. Even though he puffed up in the chest and I'm looking like Bishop is, he not going to make it, okay? He not going to make it. He He's going through that part. And then he has, um, I don't know if he's carrying a secret. Because in the next episode, he about to like admit to some more secrets and some more sin. And I'm just like, what else could there be? Unless you really knew about the call, then it's going to be a whole thing, right? So, um, they're all going back and forth and uh, Grace is down there and she gets a call from Darius. So, she's like, you know, let me take this in the other room. Lady May kind of looking suspicious like, okay, what is, what is this with Grace? What is she up to? And I'm really shocked she hasn't told her parents by now. But, um, um, especially with them being worried about the church, you know. So, anyway, so she's in the room and Darius is like, when he was in Vegas, somebody had broke into his hotel room and took his phone and his computer. Bob Whitmore really wants him you know, to stop digging because really they got something, right? And so um, he's asking Grace for these files. She opened up her MacBook and she looking for these files. And as she looking at them, they start disappearing. Somebody done hacked in and they're erasing them. I'm mad at Grace because I'm like, girl, you couldn't grab your phone and film and record at least so that we could have some evidence of this going down. I'm like, Grace, you, girl, you got to be quicker. You got to be quicker than that. So... Um, now they know that, uh, well, they knew before because they fired Darius, but they see that they are really about to dig up some, some dirt, some real deep rooted dirt because now Bob Whitmore got people just doing all kind of crazy stuff. Okay. So, um, Jacob and Carissa, they are getting ready to go sit with the counselor with Winky and, you know, Winky putting on his tie and Carissa is just... The whole entire episode, I just, I really don't understand her character because she is this woman, you know, who scorned. She had this man that was like stepping out on her, right, that she was truly in love with. But I didn't feel like from the first time we met her, I did not feel that way. Her character, the, the development of her, of her character is... You know, from the very beginning, you know, she told us this story about, or she didn't tell us this in the beginning. We found out that this was her mindset in the very beginning. Her dad was like, you know, you got what, um, basically you got to be able to keep up with this green leaf man, or you got to show that you deserve this green leaf man, right? So she had had her degrees and, you know, she had started that school, all kind of things. And, um, her dad still felt like, you know, are you worthy enough to be with this green leaf man? So, you know, her feeling like her thing about status and her thing about, you know, really be trying to become this first lady and have a church and do all these things. I feel like she's been that way from the beginning so much to the point where she's not worried about the marriage. She's not worried about salvage, like love. She don't really halfway be worried about that, you know, throughout the marriage. And then, you know, of course, they did have their romantic times. But by the time she had stepped out. Like, that was inevitable because she was not getting what she needed from her man who, you know, was stepping out on her. Where she crossed the line was when she started doing the will stuff. Because even if she would have cheated and gotten, you know, chlamydia or whatever, um, I feel like she... I feel like it would not have... They probably could have reconciled. They probably could have worked it out if she didn't, like, scheme against the whole family with the enemy, like the dude that she was messing with and she knew. So it's just like when she'd be sitting here acting like, you know, um, 
he she don't want Jacob to have shared custody you know are you sure you want to go through this of course I'm hurt I'm just like but you brought this on yourself boo you brought it on yourself okay so while I get it it still don't excuse it and I just don't understand to the magnitude like Carissa acting like she just innocent Anyway, they're getting ready to go. So Sophia has gone down to go see Zora, see what Zora up to with her slick bag. And Zora is down there trying to shoot a um, audition for some New York college, maybe NYU or something, right? And she's fumbling with the tripod, trying to do whatever, and um, asks Sophia for her help. And she sees a notification that she needs to check in for her flight tomorrow. So this little exchange between Sophia and Zora, where Sophia go tell, you know, Zora's parents, they step in, they stop her from leaving. And so then Zora tells Grace about Sophia's nudes. I was like, that was not a fair exchange. And uh, Zora would have had to see me outside. Okay. I understand Zora being her feelings, but Zora has done a lot of things on impulse. I was really trying to understand. I... I get the the part of like running away and not dealing with stuff, but the way that she just don't be thinking stuff through, it just be making me, I'm like, girl, you are not representing well for Gen Z. Okay, Gen Z, y'all do be thinking stuff through. I don't know why she would just be like, oh, well, I'ma just be gone. I'll figure it out when I get there. In New York City, girl, you can't figure it out when you get there, unless you got some secret fun Lady May gave you that we don't know about. So, you know, Sophia did write telling her parents, I'm just like Zora Raggedy for telling her mama about, um, telling Auntie Gigi about Sophia's nudes. Okay, so Daddy Zamars, or Yusef Shazam, Shazam, he, um, he shows up at the Greenleaf Estate, okay, which means Charity was able to get through to him, all right, um, Let's see, he walks up in the house, he tells, you know, Grace, oh, you the one I hung up on. And Grace is like, yeah, it's okay, or what, or no hard feelings. And he was like, I wasn't apologizing. And I'm just like, uh, yeah, Grace, calm down. I thought it was funny because I'm like, she probably not used to being talked to like that. And she probably just looking at this man like, oh, okay, Mr. Man. All right, excuse me. So they are sitting there talking about Bob Whitmore and um, you know basically Daddy Damar has got the T. Okay he's like basically my ex-wife the mama she was working for Bob Whitmore she was basically you know the voice of trying to recruit um, these different members to churches that he was a part of but the thing was Bob Whitmore was targeting low income or poor black families and then when i guess when their homes got foreclosed he would take them from up under them or something like that right and so um you know charity's like you know we have to tell phil we got to stop this but he i can't just tell him because he won't hear it from me now when they go to tell him later on i'm like this man i f i feel like he looks um bothered enough or perplexed enough to know something's not right like there's some truth here but because of all that hurt and pain associated with his dad and that relationship and him saying you know while my mama was slaving and cooking and doing all this stuff you was out running the streets and you you know you was treating her crazy and so you know we all have a little bit of that but it was like he could not even hear what this man was saying and see like the magnitude of him showing up you know charity here who genuinely loves you because they're sitting here trying to tell you something so i'm like i can't say that i would be that much in it that if my dad showed up who you know in this case he don't have no relationship with him so for him to show up it's like it's got to be something big right um and then to just be like I can't like I don't believe you and push him out and stuff I just was like mm, Phil you you might want to listen you might want to listen because you're going down the same road as your mom in a minute because see you didn't know or at least we thought you didn't know um and you were able to do all these things up under Bob just so you can become pastor but see the thing is when you scheme and when you lie and when you cheat and you do all these different things 
to try to get something, you never really feel free. You never really feel like, oh, this is good. This is liberating because there's a lot that comes with it. Yes, you you are the pastor of this church, but you still are forever going to be up under Bob Whitmore. And now you got to marry his wife and y'all going to be having kids soon. So it's just like, well, it's the last season and they're not real people. You know, these are actors and actresses, but y'all know what I'm saying. Like a circumstance like this, he can't really be thinking too straight anyway, because the fact that he did this just for a title, just for a position, it's like he has some insecurities there, which is why I be telling y'all this show should be called Insecure. Okay, so um, Judy, you know, she's saying, you know, these people are like pigeons and I was like girl you talking about these people black people or these people like green leaves and in, in, in either way the green leaves are black so you you need to watch it with these people okay okay all right I'm, I was glad we didn't get to see Judy too much in this um in this episode I do want to see her acting other stuff because <laughs> she is playing this part to a T so much to the point I do not like her Okay, so Lady May has Tara or Tara come over to the house and they are talking and she's trying to basically see like, you know, did you know about this? You know, Tara seems genuinely shocked and surprised like she didn't know that Rochelle was going to do all this. You know, she did tell her that they came by, but she thought it was innocent. I'm like, how do you have a sister all your life? And not think that she would be capable of something like this when she showed you like Rochelle's a vengeance she is really after an out for blood and i'm just like there's not gonna be anything to slow her down until she gets what she wants like nothing okay so you know lady may and tara talking and tara is looking at the house like yeah now that i see the house this house would be great i'm like oh hold on girl hold on girl you you sitting in this woman's house looking around like this is this is all they know okay and you're gonna try to take this house i understand she has good intentions but i mean you might not be getting it because they about to fight you okay down y'all not you're not getting that house all right so um at this same time bishop is down at the bar and he is getting like all the inspection paperwork making sure everything's up to code you know doing doing all that stuff you know when you when you start a business and you're doing different things and rochelle come down there and, you know, Latoya Luckett looks good. She plays this part really well. I really love the short hair on her. The makeup's always done. Her body looks good. You know, all of that. But I was like, I can't stand Rochelle. Okay? She was like, Basie should have killed you. She all in Bishop's face just staring at him in disgust. And he just asking, you know, what is it? What is it? Why do you have so much hate for me? What is it, girl? What do you need? What is the problem? That's how I used to be like in in high school and in middle school when different girls would bully me. I would just be like, girl, what is, why me? Why little old me are you choosing to just hate so much, girl? Is it something I did or said? And that's the same thing that Bishop is, you know, giving off. Like, girl, what is, what is the deal? And, you know, Rochelle is just like, you know, I'm going to find out. I'm going a, I'm to a figure out how to prove that you killed my dad. And I'm like, girl, oh, well, all right. And, um, you know, when she makes that comment about Basie should have um, killed him, you know, Bishop honestly looks shook. And I'm like, Bishop is... He hanging on, but I don't think he going to make it too much longer, y'all. I don't think he going to make it. All right, so um, um, Grace goes to see Darius. Or actually, they're wrapping up, you know, their, their visit. And he is like, you know, when all this calms down, I really want to give us a try again. And I was looking at Grace like, don't you mess this up. Trying to start a family with Noah. Or join and, and have a family with Noah when your son is grown. Okay, see, Noah don't have nothing to lose because, see, he had already lost his wife. He played around with her the first time when he messed around with Grace and he was spending all that time with Grace, doing all these favors for Grace, and then put his relationship on the line then. Then got married, left town. And, you know, when she found out that, he, that they had a child, now, I can't say that I, 
I would have behaved the same way because it's one thing if you know they had this back and forth you know flirting and stuff and I caught it and was like oh nope you got to cut Grace off I understand how important this family is we're gonna move away blah 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 and then she calls and she's like hey found out we got a son that's one thing and that's a lot a hard pill to swallow but I feel like you know marriages come with the up and downs this is a uh, not a mistake this is something that happened years ago years before me blah 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 but the fact of the matter is no one no he ain't really love was her name Isabel like that like he loved her but he loved her until his true love was was in the picture okay so um you know, no one don't have nothing to lose. He like, you know, we can, we can, we can have some more kids right now. What you want to do? He ends up telling her, you know, if you need somewhere to stay, if you know um, things go under, or y'all lose y'all house, y'all can always come stay with me and Noah because we just got a, we just got a place. We moving out my mama's house, and I'm like, these y'all green leaves need to get y'all own place anyway. Y'all don't need to be no okay but i'm hopping ahead i'm gonna go back so aj is you know in the hospital he sees his parents in the waiting room talking noah trying to you know grace is asking for some favors noah's saying he can get some things done to find out about you know um i think miss davis is her name the, the lady who owned the house before and aj is smiling you can see his face light up because you know he's like okay i see this i see how y'all got together he liking seeing them together right but i see some um I don't know if it's jealousy, I don't know if it's just hurt or bothersome or you know whatever. Grace is like, you know, Noah's able to do all these things for AJ and AJ's receptive to it, you know, um, AJ's really excited about this car that Bishop wants them to work on together. So you know, he has like a new motivation, a new like lease on life. And, um, you know, I, I really feel like Grace feels like she's not a part of it because when she offered things, he didn't want to do it. But I'm like, I mean, you know, what she ends up saying is at least he's getting the help, but I can see why she would feel that way, right? Okay, so, um, let's see. So Carissa is about to leave. Her and Winky are going to go stay with her mom. I was confused if her mom lives in town, if her mom lives up in New York. Like, I don't know where her mom lives, so... I'm like, this long, drawn-out goodbye just for her to be going down the street is a lot, but maybe she's not. And I think, you know, when you have a whole estate, estate, and your, your grown kids and their kids live in the different suites and stuff, I do think that long goodbyes would have to happen because you're used to just seeing them every day, right? There's never a day when they don't see each other. So, um... Before that, oh, Jacob goes to get Lady May and Bishop and tell them that, uh, you know, we're about to do this goodbye. But um, let me back up. Jacob and Carissa are talking and um, this is after they spoke to Zora, you know, telling her, you know, wait a couple days. We got a cousin or aunt out there. We can arrange for you to stay with them. Like, just take a breath. Right. Um... But Carissa's able to see, like, okay, yeah, Jacob, like, you, you know, you really about fatherhood. You really about, you know, your kids. And I'm just thinking back, like, when has he ever shown you that he's not about the kids? He has definitely shown you that he's not about you or this marriage. But I have always seen him, like, be a really active father. So, um, you know, she ends up saying we can have shared custody. And I was like, you need to get that recorded on video, audio, and have it written down because she moves with the wind okay tomorrow you can make her mad and she'll say no you can't have shared custody so make sure you get that in writing but um you know as they're talking saying that you know they couldn't um if they never would have met they wouldn't have zora and winky and you know they're thankful for each other and all that uh lady may and bishop in there arguing okay they arguing about uh, you know, Rochelle and Tara, you know, giving this house up and Lady May's like, you don't feel like, you know, the Lord is trying to tell you something like you don't feel something. And um, Bishop's like, no, like they need to go down and no, this is not cool. You know, Jacob busts in. He's like, you know, we about to do this goodbye. And Lady May uses this time to say, you know, the next time you marry someone, make sure that you in love with them. And then we won't have to be worried about all this mess. And so I was like, 
oh is this the pot calling the kettle i know that things happen and sometimes we have to be humble right because we forget you know that we had our own running that we was doing we had our own messing around that we was doing or what whatever right but the way that uh lady may judge jacob and and said that bishop like got her together real fast and he used her own line against her saying you know um you've been living a lie for 40 years and she, you know when she said that last week he was like, no, no, that's not true. But now all of a sudden, he want to flip it back on her. Ain't that the worst? But, you know, she's like, oh, you're right. Because, you know, she's trying to live right because she feels like that's why so many bad things are happening. Because they have so many secrets and so many things that they're not um, being honest about. So, I was like, what is Lady May about to do? She about to just go tell this secret? You know, what? What? how are we going to do this? Um, But... I don't know I just in that moment I know that actually I'm, I'm saying that before I need to say what happened so you know they go outside and they are you know saying their goodbyes and um you know Zora looking sad and you know Carissa getting in the car with Winky and I was like, Lady May, are you about to tell this secret and Charity ain't there? You know how she be feeling when she not there for the tea, girl. Just hold off one minute. But luckily, Charity pulls up and, you know, um, Lady May say, says, this is this will make up for a lifetime of missed moments. And I was like, Lord, it's just always so deep, right? So deep. So she says in the most nonchalant tie a bow on it put a button on it don't nobody ask me nothing about nothing way i have ever seen it remind me of these tiktoks and memes that i've been seeing when your parents try to apologize and they come in and they be like y'all hungry like <laughs> it just it was like um grace is the product of an affair that i had with lionel 40 years ago and went on in the house and i said girl no 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 I know if I was charity, I um, tweeted that little Arth, uh, Arthur hand, that the fist, because if y'all remember when Grace first came back, charity was just so jaded. Okay, she couldn't stand having Grace back. Carissa couldn't stand it. Jacob couldn't stand it because Grace was the favorite. Just to find out that she's not really bishops, and you know, technically. Uh, they didn't even really know. So the only thing that don't make her bishops is blood, and that's it. Um, but the way Lady May can be so judgmental is what messes her up here, because she had went in on Jacob when she could have shared with him. You know, I had struggles as well, and maybe that's why that's in you. That fidelity thing, that that disease that you can't get under control, maybe that's why. Now, now Jacob is a whole lot more intense than his mother. You know, I think um, I think Lady May was in love with Lionel. I don't know if it was just like a one-two hop step. I think she was in love with um, with Lionel. So, you know, Jacob and Charity. You know, Grace. They all on the lanai. And they they knocking back bottles because, you know, they're just laughing at the mess of family that they have. It's so much judgment and charity drunk and, you know, it's, it's so much judgment. And they just like they messed up. They really are messed up. They got their own stuff. And we were just born into it. And, you know, it's hereditary. So, of course, we do it, too. And I was just like, nah, 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 nah. Y'all are grown. So you don't have to um, subscribe to the generational curses at this point and if you was not living in that estate even if you had a house along the road from when you come into the gated area not all under the same roof you would have enough time to self-reflect and learn about self to know wow this is a generational curse and we'll be able to go talk to your parents about it and get some healing from that thing and move forward but because they all up under each other they cannot see enough of their own stuff and, and heal from it it's just a never-ending cycle so um and it's just like what aj was saying to sophia like this is not normal 
Okay, you, you got to get out and grow up. Okay, so uh, <laughs> they just like are shocked about the news and um, you know, Bishop was kind of remorseful like, you know, he didn't want Lady May to have to do it like that. But, you know, Lady May's on the straight and narrow now. Okay, so um, one of the last things that happens is uh, uh, Grace gets a call from Darius to come over because he got some stuff or whatever. And she gets over there and you can tell by like the way that it's shot that he's not there. Something about to happen, right? And so I think it was Fernando or Francisco, whatever his name is, the one that Carissa hooked up with without a condom. Okay, and um, he pulls up and he's like, he tells her to stay out of it. First, he tries to get her to come with him, and then he says, uh, stay out of it. And I'm like, girl, what is going on? And where is Darius? What did they do to this man? So, Greenleaf is heating up. This is episode six, so we really only got two episodes left because I think there's eight episodes. Um, so yeah, y'all comment down below what y'all thought about this week's episode. What are your predictions for next week? What are you really looking forward to? What are you enjoying about the show? I did want to say shout out to Insecure and the cast um, for being nominated for an Emmy. That's what's up. Y'all know that's my show. If you have not checked out my reviews, they're all in the playlist and all that um, on my page. But yeah, that's tonight's review. I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm Camera. This is Camera Music TV, and I'll see you guys next time.